So the EGR system in the car, the exhaust gas recirculation, is basically dumping some exhaust gases into the intake in certain conditions to lower the combustion temperatures within the engine. And it also has the effect of reducing the emissions. Now, most EGR systems do not operate under full load when the engine is warm. So the EGR is really just there to save the emissions and improve the fuel economy at low down. But this system can create problems within the car, particularly when it blocks up or or if the valve gets stuck open and the exhaust gases are always being dumped into the intake or it's stuck closed and the exhaust gases never get into the intake at all. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the symptoms that you will typically see when the EGR valve is stuck open and also when it's stuck closed. So one of the first things you'll notice if the EGR valve is stuck open is the engine idle will not be smooth. The engine will try to run as smoothly as possible, but because it's got this exhaust gas coming into the intake, it's upsetting the idle and it's having to continually make adjustments. So the rough idle is often a telltale sign that the EGR valve is stuck open. And that will be particularly noticeable when the engine is already warm. It can also diminish the fuel economy. So if you notice the fuel economy is substantially lower than it was, and you've not managed to identify any other obvious problems like, like faulty injectors or O2 sensors that are playing up, it could well be the EGR valve that is stuck open and that would affect the fuel economy, particularly if you're used to driving under low to higher RPMs. So typically when the EGR valve will be shut off, if that's still kicking in, that is going to be detrimental to the power, the performance and the fuel economy that you get from your your engine. If the EGR valve is stuck open or stuck closed, that can affect the emissions of the car as well. So if you're failing to meet the emissions regulations, it could well be down to that EGR valve being either stuck open or stuck closed. If the EGR is stuck closed, the temperatures in the combustion process of the engine will tend to be much higher on the average, and that can lead to premature ignition detonation, and the car will be backing off on the fueling and the timing just to make sure that that's not happening. So if you notice that you've got problems with pinking, pinging, or whatever you want to call it, wherever you live, it could well be down to the EGR valve being stuck closed. So if you suspect an EGR valve, it's not something you can really do on guesswork. You may have a notion that the EGR valve is playing up. Get an OBD2 reader, the OBD11, or most manufacturers offer some type of code reader that you just plug into your car's onboard diagnostics port and you can read those error codes from it. So that will tend to log any error codes associated with the EGR valve, not operating within its normal setup. Actually removing the EGR valve will give you an opportunity to see inside. Now the thing that most commonly happens with EGR valves is they just get coked up with all the carbon that's going through the exhaust. So if the engine has not been burning particularly clean, a lot of that is going to accumulate within the EGR system and around the valve. It's going through quite a complex series of pipes, so there's a lot of scope for these buildups to start depositing and building up. So they eventually start to restrict the flow. So even if the valve is open or closed, the flow can be so restricted that the EGR valve is effectively just not working at all. So the typical lifespan of an EGR should be at least 10 years. If the car is properly looked after and in good order, you shouldn't need to do anything to a typical EGR valve. But as I said earlier, if the engine is not running as cleanly as possible and it's depositing a lot more soot through the exhaust, that can lead to premature failure of the EGR valve. It is a moving part, so it is still subject to wear and tear. And you can drive a car with a malfunctioning EGR. It's not recommended because that can often have knock-on effects upsetting the way the engine burns fuel and can lead to long-term reliability issues in other components of the engine. So it's something you really want to address early on. You might be thinking about removing the EGR completely. It's one of those annoying things that's been built in for emissions. So I've done another video that goes into the specifics, the pros and the cons of removing the EGR system. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. If you've had that done, let us know how you got on with it and what your experience has been with having the EGR completely removed and whether there's any other issues that have cropped up as a result of that. I'm always interested to hear people's experiences. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you've learned a little bit about the EGR system and just some of the telltale signs to look out for that could identify that that EGR valve is starting to play up, please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. If you've not subscribed, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.